Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good day and welcome to Mun Infra Construction Limited Q3 and 9 months FY24 earnings conference call hosted by Go India Advisors. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference has been recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Yashish Parikh, AGM Investor Relations and Corporate Finance from Man Infra Construction Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Aditya. Good evening, everyone. A warm welcome to all of you present on the earnings call for Man Infra Construction Limited for Q3 and 9 months FY24. Today, from the management, we have Mr. Parak Shah, the Chairman Emeritus of the company, Mr. Manan Shah, the Managing Director of the company, and Mr. Ashok Mehta, the Group CFO of the company. I request everyone to keep the discussion on the strategic uh, data. For any kind of uh, data, you can connect with me directly or on the offline. I now hand over the call to Mr. Manan Shah, the Managing Director of the company, to present the business performance of the company and the financial performance of the company. Over to you, Mr. Shah. Thank you, Ashish. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am thrilled to stand you today to present the earning highlights of MICL Group in the third quarter of fiscal year 2024. Quarter 3 financial year 2024 has been sort of extraordinary, characterized by strategic incentives, initiatives, successful launches, and robust financial performance. Before we delve into the financial updates of the quarter, I would like to reflect on our journey and where we are today. Let's briefly reflect on our company's journey and current standings. Starting with excellence in fundraising, first and foremost during the third quarter of financial year 2023-2024, we have raised an amount of Rs. 543 crores through the preferential route. The preferential offering was an issue priced of each warrant at Rs. 155, inclusive of a premium of Rs. 153 per warrant. I want to express my sincere thanks to all investors who participated in a preferential issue. This capital infusion is a strategic move and is a testament to the confidence investors place in our vision. This emphasizes our commitment to expanding our footprint in the real estate sector. As of January 31st, 2024, we have made the allotment of Rs. 3.5 crore convertible warrants on receipt of 25% of issue price money amounting to Rs. 136 crore. The remaining Rs. 407 crore is anticipated within the next 18 months, solidifying our financial position for future growth. Talking about our luxurious project launches, we are delighted to announce the successful launch of two ultra-luxurious projects in Mumbai, collectively spanning an impressive more than 10.6 lakh square feet of carpet area. Starting with the first project, Aradhya One Park in Ghatkopar East, unveiling in January 2024, stands as a testament to luxury living. Spanning a carpet area of more than 4.1 lakh square feet, this uber luxurious residential project offers 3 BHK, 4 BHK and 5 BHK configurations. The response to the launch has been phenomenal with outstanding sales performance of Rs 333 crore reaching approximately 25% of the total estimated sales potential within a few days. We are pleased to share that all necessary approvals have been secured and the construction at the site is already in progress, ensuring the timely realization of this exceptional project. In the preceding quarter of October 2023, we had introduced another iconic residential marvel, Arade Avan, boosting a carpet area of 6.5 lakh square feet. This project is poised to be India's one of the tallest residential towers redefining Mumbai skyline. We shall be closing our EOI route by the end of March 2024 and then the sales shall be reflected accordingly. But we have received phenomenal response 
from the buyers and the customers which is showing a good progress and growth for that particular project as well. Aradhya One represents not just architectural grandeur but a visionary approach for contemporary living. These successful launches underscore our commitment to excellence, innovating and delivering living spaces that surpass expectation. We are excited about the promising future of these projects and the positive impact they will have on elevating the standard of living, luxury living in Mumbai. Moving on to business development triumphs, we have seen a strong real estate portfolio and highlighting our encouraging business development in FY2024, we have successfully acquired three new projects consecutively in each quarter, collectively measuring an impressive of 22 lakh square feet of carpet area in Mumbai city. With such business expansion, we take pride in a robust real estate portfolio encompassing 5.7 million square feet now, complemented by a construction portfolio of 16 million square feet. The real estate sales visibility has reached an impressive of 12,000 crores from our recent new launches in FY24 and the upcoming projects. MI Sale Group has made a significant impact on real estate of Mumbai's landscape, showcasing our agility and effectiveness in a short span. These projects include the Pali Hill project located in Bandra West, an ultra luxurious project spanning 50,000 square feet of carpet area which was undertaken in the month of December 2023. Featuring limited residential apartment with four and five bed configurations, this project represents a strategic addition to a luxury portfolio. The project anticipating to generate rupees 500 crores of sales has already started garnering interest from the potential customers eagerly waiting for us to launch the project. Our acquisition also includes Another large-scale layout at Goregaon West, uh, Royal Netra. During the second quarter of financial year 2024, in August 2023, is another milestone for us, covering 17.5 lakh square feet of carpet area. This project marks one of the largest redevelopment initiatives on a 10-acre land parcel in the western suburbs of Mumbai city. Aradhya One Park the project situated at Ghatkopar East is also acquired in the first quarter of FY 2024, which was swiftly launched in January 2024, reflecting our commitment to timely execution and strategic growth. These acquisitions underscore our proactive approach to business expansion and our dedication to delivering innovative and high value projects in the dynamic real estate landscape of Mumbai City. We also had large deliveries of the projects during the financial year of 2023-2024 where we successfully delivered two large projects firstly starting off with our project Aradhya One Earth in Ghatkopar East, Mumbai. It received its occupation certificate in January 2024 for the remaining residential towers. Having previously secured the occupation certificate for the initial four towers of sale we have successfully completed and handed over the entire project. With a carpet area of around 5 lakh square feet and construction area exceeding 14 lakh square feet, this feat was accomplished in less than 3.5 years from its first launch in September 2020. Importantly, these towers were delivered at least 1 to 1.5 years ahead of the commitment date, underscoring a steadfast commitment to timely project completion. Currently, nearly 90% of the inventory has already been sold out, reflecting the project's outstanding success in the market. Secondly, we have also received the occupation certificate in less than four years for delivering two out of the total 347 residential towers in our Atmosphere O2 project located at Nahur Mulun West, Mumbai. This significant accomplishment is highlighted by the fact that nearly 90% of the inventory in these towers has also been sold out. Moving on to the key strength before time completion methods, MICL has always adapted its key strength in our commitment to delivering projects 
way ahead of schedule. We have delivered all 16 projects comprising of 2.2 million square feet of carpet area at least six months to one year before the scheduled date with nearly 95% of the inventory sold out before the receipt of occupation certificate. Talking about the business performance for the quarter three financial year 2024 and nine months financial year 2024. Updating you on the business performance for the year, here are some key facts. In the first nine months of financial year 2024, we achieved a sales volume of 1.4 lakh square feet, totaling rupees 353 crores of booking value. The sales was primarily driven by the Murun project and the Acer project. For the quarter three financial year 2024, we achieved a sales volume of 0.5 lakh square feet amounting to 118 crores. The Murun project continued to be a major contributor to this quarter sales performance. Our diligent efforts led to the successful collection of Rs. 821 crores till the nine months of FY24, which includes Rs. 356 crores collected in quarter three of FY24. Notably, this achievement is attributed to the completion of the key projects like Atmosphere O2, Tower DNE in Mulun and Aradia One Earth, the remaining towers of Radko East. Moving on to construction highlights, the three ongoing projects are at the High Park Towers E and F near the Acer is completed and OC is expected to be soon while the ultra luxurious project at Aradhya Evo uh, which is at Juhu and Atmosphere O2 the residential tower F and commercial tower naming Gateway are nearly completion with finishing work in progress. I would like to update that the construction area has already, construction work has already been commenced for the recent new launches of Aradhya 1 Park located at Ghatkopar East and Aradhya 1 located at Taradhya. We are delighted to share that in our infra, infra project located in Navasheva, phase 1 of BMCT project, we have already executed 80% of the work while the phase 2 of the project involving pavement works on the reclaimed earth at the fourth container terminal of JNPT is progressing as per schedule. Talking about the, our EPC portfolio, the EPC business contributes significant part of the revenue of the business. I would like to highlight that of the total port order from BMCT, which is worth 1,830 crores, we have executed over 1,060 crores of work till date and have received collection of nearly rupees 1,200 crores for the same. On the EPC front, the order book stands at rupees 1,047 crores as of December 2023, with a corresponding construction area of over 110 hectares of port work and 4.8 million square feet of other infrastructure residential projects as well. The PMC contract of Aradhya Avan project at South Mumbai encompassing 18 lakh square feet of construction area is also part of the order book. Moving on to the consolidated financials. Now, let me present you the quarter three and nine months financial year 2024 of the company, post which we will be able to open for questions and answers. The revenue from operations for the quarter stood at rupees 242 crores compared to 457 crores in the previous year. The real estate business contributed 124 crore while EPC contributed to 118 crore during this quarter. I would like to emphasize that most of our real estate projects are near completion and a substantial portion of the revenue is already recognized from these projects as on December 2023. During the quarter, revenue in the real estate business was contributed by the projects namely Aradhya High Park, Aradhya One Earth, Aradhya Evoke, the Daisa project is nearly completion and Ghatkopar project has been completed and delivered in January 2024. They have negligible unsold inventory as of December 2023 and have already contributed majority of the revenue during the nine months of the financial year 2023 and 2024. Aradhya Parkwood project 
which is at Daisar Mira Road, would soon start recognizing revenue in the coming quarters. In our EPC business, the phase one of BMCT port project, the significant work is executed while the phase two of the project is in progress. The total income for the quarter stood at rupees 261 crore compared to rupees 472 crore in the previous year. For the nine months FI 2023, FI 2024, the total income is at rupees 1028 crores compared to 1246 crores in the previous year. The company's EBITDA for the third quarter of FI 24 stood at rupees 103 crore compared to 129 crore in the previous year while it reported margin of rupees 42.5 compared to 28.2% in the previous year. The EBITDA for 9 months FI24 was at rupees 277 crore compared to 290 crore in the previous year. The company reported net profit of rupees 83 crore in comparison to rupees 85 crore and 9 months of financial year 2024 it recorded a jump of 33% year on year to rupees 235 crore compared to 177 crores in the previous year. I am pleased to report that MICL, our standalone company, has demonstrated robust financial resilience and strategic financial management. We have invested approximately rupees 800 crore in our real estate projects, showcasing our commitment to growth and development. Notably, despite this investment, our debt position remains net cash positive, reflecting prudent financial practices. As of December 2023, MICL remains a commendable liquid position with Rs. 545 crore in consolidated reserves. Now, I wish to extend sincere gratitude to all our esteemed shareholders for their enduring trust and support in our company. We are pleased to inform you that we have declared our fourth interim dividend of Rs. 0 0.54 that is 27% per equity share on 37.13 crore of outstanding shares having a face value of rupees 2 each for the financial year 2023-2024. In all, we have declared a total dividend of rupees 1.62 per equity share that is 81% on 37.13 crore of outstanding shares having a face value of rupees 2 each, collectively amounting to rupees 60.15 crores for the financial year 2023-2024. Now, I open the floor for questions and discussions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchdown telephone. If you wishes to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Dhananjay Mishra from Sundi Securities. Please go ahead, sir. Hello. Hello, uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, so, congratulations on a very strong operating performance. Uh, sir, uh, while we have done uh, 350 crore in nine months in terms of pieces, and uh, in January also we we sold uh, 330 crore from Hard Copper project. So net net we have done close to 680 crore till date. So uh, how the number will look like uh, on full year basis in terms of pieces, uh, and also what is the kind of phase we have seen in the Tarde uh, project uh, because it was launched in October. So this year we've got uh, multiple projects which are uh, uh, in pipeline. Like Kart Cooper project, we are uh, we have already launched. We've seen good momentum. Uh, this year, last quarter, we are hoping to, but most probably the next uh, year, first quarter, we would be launching our Ville Parle project also. With that, uh, we are adding on to uh, the remaining inventory of Juhu also, being uh, uh, which is going to be near completion. So we are anticipating those sales as well. Over and above that, we have also uh, doing a good momentum at uh, Dhaisar, which is our phase two, Aradhya Parkwood. So all of these projects, uh, the momentum we are seeing strong, and the way you're seeing the quarterly performance is currently, which is uh, we are seeing a similar run rate, which we shall maintain. Probably it will go higher, 
than the current numbers because the, at the initial launch levels we are seeing good momentum from especially uh, this Ghatkopar and Vele Parle project. Talking about Avan, we have yet not concluded uh, the launch phase, so we are going to be posting numbers uh, in almost in the by mid of April uh, because the launch gets over by uh, March end. So that is when we are seeing, but the momentum is very very strong. We are seeing continuous walk-in still happening. Um, if, um, from the customers and they are very happy with the product, the overall presentation. So people are showing good confidence and wanting to move forward with the bookings. Okay. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, next year sales, uh, like uh, Ghatkopar, we have seen very good response. So balance 900 can can be booked next year itself or it, it will take some more time. And uh, in, regarding Ghatkopar project, uh, what is the timeline uh, to launch that project? So Ghatkopar project is totally a three and a half years project, but uh, because the momentum is strong, we are seeing the anticipation of sales completing in probably two years. So next year, the entire 900 cannot be booked, but uh, yes, we can be hopeful for that, uh, and the try would definitely be on. But it uh, seems difficult to have the entire 100% sales concluded within a year. Okay. That's a Goregao project, I was just saw. Sorry, I was asking about 4,000 crore. When are when expecting to launch? Maybe would be, uh, probably in the last quarter of the next year uh, because we are just uh, securing the uh, permissions and the groundwork is going on. A lot of societies, there's other paperwork going on. So that's going to be in the next year, the last quarter. Okay. So next year at least we can see uh, uh, good growth on uh, FY24 numbers in terms of pre-sales, right? On year-on-year -year yes. basis, yes. Okay. okay, thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Nisha Shah from Access Securities. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, basically, I would have two questions. One would be, are we looking at any more major redevelopments in the Ghatkopar East area where predominantly uh, we're looking at redevelopments? And uh, second would be, if we're looking at anything outside Bombay, say Navi Mumbai, which is poised to be the second Bombay uh, in the future, and the real estate is expected to pick up due to the infrastructure that's going on there. So do we see anything happening uh, in Navi Mumbai as well? Hi. Uh, Ghatkopar, yes, uh, we have already bidded for another um, uh, project, uh, so that negotiations is going on with the societies, and we are almost through, so you would be seeing some progress in Ghatkopar definitely for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Navi Mumbai, uh, we are not currently very keen on, uh, but we are focusing more towards uh, South Mumbai uh, and the other portfolios of Mumbai City. Uh, so we are uh, anticipating that we would be winning another project at Marine Lines uh, and okay. uh, in the western suburb as well. So the focus currently is in South Mumbai and Western Mumbai. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask question. Our next question is from the line of Mayur from Profit Mart Securities. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Congrats on the successful fundraise. Uh, how do you expect the funding utilized? And secondly, on the uh, dip in revenue on a year-on-year -year basis, but the EBITDA margin have a signif uh, significantly short up. Could you elaborate more on that? How do you see revenue and the margin growth going forward? Hi. So, uh, regarding the profitability going on higher, uh, like we said, we've always been focusing on uh, the bottom line, the company, and a lot of the projects uh, which we had announced in the past also, uh, it's on DM model. So what happens is the revenue does not come into our books, but the profitability does. There's a reason you will always be seeing a short up in the profit margins and the revenue is probably the top line getting stabilized. Uh, and the sir, first question is the congrats on the, uh, means, uh, how do you expect the fund being the utilized? 
So regarding the fundraising which we've done, uh, there are t uh, three aspects to it. One is uh, we've raised the fund uh, for future expansion and the new projects that which we are targeting. Um, second is the existing projects. So we have got a safe liquidity fund also which is required at the time. So uh, with the expansion that we've done with these multiple projects naming, um, you know, Fat Cooper, the further projects that we are bidding, uh, the fund is also going to be utilized for that and we always keep some um, uh, dry powder with us uh, for uh, any opportunity that comes on our way which uh, helps us uh, uh, being always liquid. Okay, thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask questions. Our next question is from the line of Manish from Nimal Bank Securities Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my first question on the uh, your slide number 16 of the presentation, and uh, it is mentioned a uh, few of the new projects like Virgos, uh, Pali project, uh, Varega project, and Aradhya one uh, park project. But the dates is quite confusing because uh, dates it is mentioned Q3, Q2, FI24, and Q1, FI24. I am unable to understand uh, this, uh, the, uh, this paragraph. So the dates that you are seeing are the dates of announcements. The the launches uh, are planned. Uh, so one park is already launched, which we gave the numbers also, where we have sold 25% inventory, consolidating to around 333 crores. That's the Bat Cooper project, which we launched in uh, last month. Uh, Royal Nitra project I just mentioned, we are going to be uh, anticipating it uh, by the end of next year. And uh, talking about the Pali Hill project, uh, again the paperwork and permission seeking is going on, where uh, it would be launched uh, uh, before uh, the end of next year as well. So we are hoping it maybe by around December time is what the anticipated timeline is. The second question on the, our EPC business. So last, uh, in, in, if I look at our March uh, 23 balance um, financials, we had a order book of 980 crores. Now it is 1047 crores and a growth of 6.83 on the in the order book, and revenue growth of 17.8 percent. I I understand you. Last time you spoke about uh, it will be a balance approach in terms of growing the EPC business and. Real estate business because right now you have more focus on real estate business, which is uh, anyway it's a growth and profitable business for us. But uh, how would one should think of EPC revenue growth uh, over the medium term, uh, whether it should be 10% kind of thing, given our real estate business ambitions? So in-house projects is what uh, also adds on to uh, uh, the PMC revenue, which uh, is part of the EPC portfolio. So we had uh, given a clarification on that as well, where Avan's uh, uh, order was also been uh, added on, which is the PMC income, which comes under the EPC portfolio for us. And uh, multiple of these projects, which are going to be launched in the forthcoming quarters in the next year, that would also add on to the EPC order book uh, of our in-house portfolio. And last question on the our nine month performance of the real estate business. So, as per the slide number sixteen, uh, we have achieved a volume of one point four lakh square feet and a value of three fifty three plus. You can add up the Gart Copper recent sale of three three three. So, but if I look at your last year number, uh, corresponding number is nine ninety two crores of the value and the four point three square feet of a uh, volume. So, in, in terms of uh, pre-sales number during the nine month is uh, lower uh, meaningfully compared to last year. So, how you see the quarter four? Yeah, this is Paraksha. See, this is, you always have to understand that one figure is a much sales figure. And second, what you have been able to book in accounting pattern. You cannot compare like last year this sale was there because every time in a real estate sector, as per the accounting system, unless and until you complete your 25% sale, 
and your 25% construction is over, you cannot book that cell. We can just give you the guideline to, yes, we sold 333 crore rupees at Ghat Copper, but that is not going to be booked in my balance sheet this year. So last year's turnover, what you have been seeing, there is an accumulation of last two years. So that is it's the cycle, like whichever the projects we launch, there can be a sales guideline is one and the accounting pattern is different. That all investor has to understand this. Thank you. Sir, I'm, I'm not looking p and figure, I'm looking the our sales figure, which is uh, in terms of pre-sales figure, the, the square feet sold on the, those various projects. I'm not looking p and I understand uh, the, the construction cycle and the recognition of uh, the sales into the p and I'm looking the your pre-sale number of last year, which is, or your March presentation, which is around 992 crores, and we sold 4.3 square feet of area. So I'm comparing that number, and I'm not looking p and comparison here. No, again, you have to understand, this year we have a more projects which are on a PMC basis or on a DM model. So being a DM model, the turnover will not book in my books. The top line will not come in my books. But the profit, yes, will come in my books, which you have been able to reflect in this nine months balance sheet also, if you will see that our profit is much higher than last year's nine months, mainly because of the it's a DM fees also. Number one. Number two, we have yet not launched the projects because now other projects are in a pipeline. So now the series of projects are going to come in next financial year, which are going to be launched. Like say Pali Hill project, like Kalanagar project, Marine Lines project. We are expecting another project in Tatkopa also. Uh, this uh, there is a third third phase also and part of second phase also Gorega also that these are the all projects which are in a pipeline that will come now. Okay. And uh, we have a bel case on balance sheet is around uh, more than 500 crores and uh, we recently raised capital so it indicate or give signal. Uh, uh, whether we are looking uh, even stronger growth in our businesses, how should we read the, our capital raise and from, uh, from a perspective of your historical growth rate and now, despite having very strong balance sheet, we raise the capital. So how should we read the management thinking for the growth after the raise of capital? In last phone call also we mentioned and we announced everyone that the projects which are ongoing projects, that financial closure is done. Whatever the projects I am having presently in hand, that much financial closure is there without the debt. Now, if I have to look for the new projects, I will need a next fund. So, we come a company policy is that you have to raise the money when you don't need. When you don't need money, people are ready to give. But when we need a money at that time, we don't want to be going beggars. So, it's a plan for next one, one and a half year time. And this investment will be useful to us for next three to four years, constant growth. Thank you. And lastly, any update on the our real, uh, U.S. real estate uh, business? Uh, how, uh, how much sales happening over there? Can you comment about the how those is, uh, because we have investment around 100 crores plus over there. So how's the returns uh, developing over there? In the U.S., we have around 100 crore rupees cash liquidity also. The way we are having a cash liquidity in India, that much cash liquidity, we have kept it over there also. In the U.S., our first project, which was just a started project, there was a two bungalow project is there. That project is completed. We received the occupation certificate out of two bungalows. One bungalow is already sold. And another bungalow we are expecting to close by this month. And the negotiations are going on. The second project, which we started, at Miami only, Coral Gable, which is a highly luxury area. There also we are making one high-end bungalow, where the RCC is nearer to completion, maybe by March end or first week of April, the RCC work will be over. And that project, in the U.S., you, that, that's not the style of India. Like, you just can't go and sell the product. You have to sell the product once your certain portion of the work has been completed. So that bungalow is also in a streamline. We are doing one project at Fort Lauderdale, 
support lauderer we have joint hand with the local developer also as well as the ritz carlton the brand is there which is going on the final discussion is on and there also the potential fsi has also been increased we were having i think uh, as per my memory some there was some 54 flats were there and now it is going to become some 69 flats around so there also we see a good potential the us market is slightly slower but the price are still there and the price are still increasing sale is slower but the price is very stable over there one another project fourth project is there in a miami at coral gable that final negotiations with the local developers are going on the plot has been acquired by us thank you and last our tardev project uh, i understand our launch will be complete in quarter four but uh, how much inventory we have put to uh, put for the sale on, uh, during the launch sir 25% 40% how much we have put till now approximate 16 to 17% we have sold 16 to 17% we have sold out of 6.5 lakh lakh square feet right sir yes thank you the total project is 6.5 lakh square feet out of that we have launched around 3 lakh square feet out of 3 lakh square feet we have been successfully been able to sold somewhere around 70000 square feet so if you consider the 3 lakh square feet then yes we sold around 22% but overall project we sold around 15 to 17% thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen a reminder to all participants you may press star and one to ask question our next question is from the line of rutvik from one up financial please go ahead hi uh, good evening sir uh, sir couple of questions from my end Uh, so firstly uh, on the business development front how are we looking at uh, for fy25 uh, you mentioned that uh, we will be acquiring projects uh, from the fund raise so what kind of business development uh, can we envisage uh, in terms of uh, total gdp gdv and what is the kind of investment that we will do in uh, bd for uh, fy25 uh as we mentioned before also we are very bullish for next 5 years the projects which are in hand which is already started or which are about to start in next 3 to 4 months time which itself is having 3 to 5 years cycle mm. we are actually a book for next 3 to 5 years that much work we are having in hand the fund raise which has been done plus the what liquidity we are having plus from the project the because certain projects are getting over so the cash flow will come hmm. we believe that in next 3 years time we will be able to invest a more than 1000 crore rupees without taking the debt or without considering any partners so but this money which we are targeting whatever the fund raise money or whatever we are having additional liquidity that all money is for the future for next 2 years onwards for next 2 years we are fully booked and we are happy with that and we do that much work which we can deliver on time and before time thank you okay uh, thank you sir this is helpful uh, sir second question is on the operating cash flow from the residential segment uh, in fy24 what what can be the operational cash flow uh, from the residential segment and what was it in 9 months the tech hi this is yashesh here yeah. uh, can we take this question offline is that okay no, no, no problem i i will get get in touch with you okay. thank you uh, that's it from my side uh, thank you and all the best thank you our next question is from the line of majid ahmed from smart sense please go ahead Uh, thank you for the opportunity i see that you added many projects on the real estate side this year 
with a uh, faster pace of completion in ongoing project and fundraise are we looking to add more projects to build the pipeline further and what kind of projects are we looking at if you can please elaborate also which areas are we looking to expand in further going forward i think your every question answer has already been answered okay sir so already i am again i am repeating because you are asked yes we are looking for a new project but in the real estate sector whenever you look for a new project and the actual execution starts it generally takes one and a half to two years so whatever the new projects we are seeing that is for the pipeline for after two years in the real estate sector it's not never going to happen that i will negotiate the land and i will take the purchase the land and i will get the iod cc uh, environment clearance high rise committee approval so this all takes two years time so yes we have our team is already working on that because we will need a further job after two years so that process is on thank you thank you our next question is from the line of rao thakur from nvs brokerage please please go ahead yes sir if we compare the pbt numbers of q3 this uh, last year and this year and the packed numbers of q3 last year and this year the growth is there is hardly any growth so is there any element of extraordinary income or something in this uh sorry i have not got your point because one side you are saying it's a extra profit and one side you are no, saying no 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 no, no i am just saying that between these two numbers of pbt and pat it is a uh, both the numbers are flat on a q3 basis so is there any element of extraordinary income or something in this uh there was yes in quarter 3 of last year we had launched it and this may happen again also in future also i should not okay. misguide you yeah because every time whenever i booked like say in one and what he had mentioned that in a ghat ko par we sold 333 crore worth today correct but by the time i will book in my books hmm there could be the sale of 700 crore rupees correct and in that quarter you will see all of a sudden a jump of a sale of 700 crore rupees correct so this had happened in last year also because of the insert project what we had launched before hmm. and it was a large project so we were not been able to a uh, project that figures immediately because the 25% threshold limit was not there yes so that amount has come in last year's quarter correct and correct if you see nine months pet last year nine months pet was 177 crore rupees which we had been successfully achieved this year at 235 crore rupees correct last year the beta was 22.9% which has become now 42% there also one of the main reason is that there is a dm model fees also so if you are seeing my turnover of 348 crore rupees of real estate this year this actually we may have completed the sale of almost 600 crore rupees but okay. because we are on a dm model it doesn't reflect in my book but the profit correct. reflects in my book correct 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 sure sure yeah thank you sir yeah thanks Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Yomesh, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, I am a new investor, but I was looking at your quarterly numbers, and they are constantly going down Q2 and Q3. So, to maintain the levels of the uh, previous year, do you expect a sudden jump in last quarter Q4? Is that so? Uh, i don't think that there is anything which is a there is no jump in the profit or no no jump it's not a constant figure but yes yeah. again the next quarter also we believe it's good and not only next quarter we believe mm-hmm. that next 8 to 10 quarters are good but you uh, reverse to the q2 and q3 has lagged behind uh, year on year again i am repeating it all depends on the sales 
it all depends on the when you are been able to book number 1 mm-hmm. number 2 always in a real estate sector or especially in a epc business where we are doing the port sector work the mm-hmm. second quarter is a monsoon quarter in the monsoon quarter the the work doesn't happen in a port so in a port when we work practically we work maximum for 9 months and not 12 months the so three months we are not been able to work so that you cannot compare quarter on quarter and i would advise you that in any real estate company or any epc company never match the figures on quarter on quarter right so overall we so we can expect the improvement but and of course we think that we believe that next five years is of man infra Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Dipesh from Man Finance. Please go ahead. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes. Very. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, just want to know, uh, going forward, our focus is going to be mainly real estate on DM and redevelopment basis. and uh, or, or are we also going to focus on the epc business uh, which is a port business or uh, any government uh, orders i told in my many phone calls or any investors relationship meetings i always mention i am a businessman at present yes we are more focused on a redevelopment or a dm phase because there is a cash liquidity you don't need much money but we are not doing only dm model we are not doing only redevelopment we are into redevelopment also we are into dm model also we are working on a virgin land also we are working on a sra projects also and we are doing the epc business for our in house project as well as the port sector and in future also wherever the opportunities are there we will continue as in when see in our case we have a liberty to change our business models because we always stood that free so we do not have to go and take the approvals from the bank if we have to change our model and that's why we are always successful that is what our belief is that and that we would like to continue in future also thank you okay So right now, what is the debt situation? We are net debt free, but uh, is there any uh, short term or uh, or a long term debt which is there? We have a loan of hundred and twenty three crore rupees in okay. one specific and project at Daisa. Over and above okay. that, whatever the in secured loans, if you have been able to see in a balance sheet, these are not actually in secured loan. It's a partner's contribution, but in a box we have to take it as an insecure loan only so this is the partners contribution so we have a loan of 123 crore rupees again that we are sitting on a liquidity of some 550 crore rupees or some odd figure uh, absolutely yeah, the last uh, fundraise was uh, really good uh, and it's very good investors coming in uh, just one, one question about the us project uh, how much uh, revenue expectations are we having and how much are we going to i mean apart from these four projects are we going to do more into us or our focus is going to be mumbai uh, our main focus will definitely be mumbai but yes we have a office in us if we will get a better opportunity over there we can do work over there also as far as the recognition of us profits and all as i mentioned that we sold one bungalow and we are in almost near closing the second bungalow so that recognition will be there the balance as for the us standard we won't be able to recognize for next financial year also it may start recognizing in 2026 onwards 2026 yeah okay and what is the money which we have invested in us Uh, we are sitting on a liquidity of around 110 crore rupees, and uh, I think we have invested somewhere around 190 crore rupees. 190 crores. Okay. Okay. And uh, who's handling uh, this? I mean, anybody from the family is handling uh, in US, or is just a team? 
No, no, no. Vassal, my younger son is there. He is full time over there, and me and Manan are visiting faculty. I go three mm-hmm. times a year. Right. And my team is there. Perfect, perfect. Thank you, sir, and all the very best. And uh, really hope to see uh, the similar kind of growth uh, coming in for the small investors also. Thank you. You will not get disappointed. Don't worry. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was the last question for the day. I now end the conference over to management for closing comments. Thank you, everyone. on behalf of maninsa construction limited management i thank you everyone once again for participating on the con call if you have any question you can get back to me on my email id or you can call us on the, the mobile number that is printed on the presentation thank you thank you on behalf of go india advisors that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines